Hello there, and welcome back to another gluten free, lactose free, and yeast free baking video. How are we doing today? Today, I'm going to be making some gluten free, simple chocolate cupcakes. I mean, chocolate, you've just got to love it. It's actually after I made this recipe that I realised that chocolate was so big to me because I actually named my dog after my favourite chocolate at the time which was Magic Stars. So of course that love is never going to die. So as I say here are some super simple chocolate cupcakes that are of course going to be gluten free, lactose free and yeast free. You will be needing the following equipment. Some scales, a 12 hole muffin or cupcake tray, 12 cupcake cases, one large mixing bowl, a wooden spoon or electric hand whisk, a spatula, a sieve, an ice cream scoop or a tablespoon and teaspoon just to move your mixture from your mixing bowl to your cupcake cases. I've actually lost my ice cream scoop so I can't use that today, hence why I'm using them instead. Some spray oil, a cake tester, a skewer, a toothpick or a teaspoon handle just to check that your cupcakes are cooked. And finally, a cooling rack. You will also be needing the following ingredients. 150 grams of butter softened, I like to use lacto-free butter. 150 grams of caster sugar, two medium sized eggs beaten, 150 grams of gluten free self raising flour, and 20 grams of cocoa powder. So, let's -a go! First things first, measure out and prepare all of your ingredients so that they're completely ready for you to use, and then preheat your oven to 180 degrees C on a conventional oven, 160 degrees C on a fan oven, or gas mark 4. So now that that is all done, we are now going to prepare our tray. So for this, we will be needing our cupcake or muffin tray and our 12 cupcake cases. So now that we've got these, we're simply, whoo, without blowing everything out of the way, going to put 12 of our cupcake cases into our cupcake. Oh, I've only got three, honestly. Right, let's do the spotty ones then. So as I was saying, we're going to put 12 of these. There's not enough of them either. So, as I say, we're going to put 12 of these into our cupcake or muffin tray. Making sure that they're not doubled up, because that is not fun, because then you've wasted one, one that could have made the most amazing cupcake in the world. There we go, so that's that lot in. Just double check that they're not doubled. No, they're not. So now that this is done, we're going to place this off to the side until we're ready to put our cupcake mixture into these. So now that we've done all that nasty prep work, it is now time to begin actually making our cupcakes. So for this we will be needing our wooden spoon or electric hand whisk, our large mixing bowl, our spatula and our sieve, although we will be needing that later on, not right now, and all of our cupcake ingredients. So to start with, we are going to add all of our butter to our large mixing bowl. Followed by our caster sugar. And this is exactly why I go round it with a spatula to make sure it all gets in there. And now we're going to beat these together until they are light and fluffy. Oh, that was far too high. There we go. And now we're just going to add in our two medium sized beaten eggs. And now we're going to beat this together until it is really well combined and smooth. We don't want any butter bits left in there like blobs of butter because otherwise when we bake our cupcakes it's going to create holes in the cakes and I think that's a complete waste of the effort that you're pushing in now. So again, we're going to beat this together until very smooth and very well combined. So see, this is where it's going to get slightly difficult for me because I actually don't have a bowl big enough to put the sieve in. But we're going to place all of our self-raising flour, gluten-free self-raising flour into our sieve. Followed by all of our cocoa powder. Ah, see, it's not doing it right. Let's put pea there. Oh, it is big enough, that'll do. And now I'm just going to repeat the same process with the self-raising flour. There we go, that's all of it. Don't want to do the big crash because obviously it's just going to splurt up everywhere, which wouldn't be useful. So this is where it's going to get slightly complicated. We are going to sieve a little bit of this mixture into our main mixture. And then we're going to mix this together and then stop and start all the way through. I have put in my instructions mixing all the time, but unless you're very efficient or very clever, 
I don't think I'm going to be able to do that, so I'm going to have to stop and start, but you'll see what I do as the time passes. There we go, so that's that. And then I'm just going to scrape down the sides of this bowl as well. And see, look, I couldn't help but make mess. That's just the way I bake. So now I'm going to mix this all together and then I'm going to stop, wipe around the sides of my mixing bowl and mix for, uh, mix for one final time. Right, so now we're just going to go around the sides of the mixing bowl. Oh, goodness, what do I take with me? There we go. Oh, 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 that was a good catch. So now I'm going to mix this one final time for good luck. So now that this is all done, I'm going to grab my prepared tray and actually just clear everything up. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but you'll also be needing your spray oil, and I know that I definitely didn't mention whatever you're going to use to move your mixture into your 12 cupcake cases. So now that I think, I think I've got everything, I think I've got everything, we are now going to move this mixture into our cupcake cases, cases evenly. And the reason I've got the spray oil is that I have found if I don't use this before adding the mixture to the cupcake cases, that the mixture really sticks to the cupcake cases, therefore you lose quite a lot of that lovely delicious cake. And using this just makes it cleaner to come out of and you don't get crumbs everywhere other than when you eat the thing, which I think is the best part. So it's basically so you lose as little of the mixture as possible. So I'm going to show you how to do what the first row and then you just get on with it from there and I'll just skip to the end because you don't want to watch me be doing all of that. So get this ready first. One, two, three, and down. I haven't made cupcakes in ages. It's going to take me a little while to get into the swing of it again. Come on. There we go. And then now that I've finished all of that, I'm just going to scrape around the sides of my mixing bowl. Oh, stop them down. Goodness, your work surface is going to get dirty anyway, so it doesn't matter. And now I'm just going to spread this last little bit to the ones that I think have got a little less in them. So I'm going to say... You... So now that this is all done, we're going to place this into our preheated oven for 15 to 20 minutes or until we insert a cake tester, a skewer, a toothpick or a teaspoon handle and it comes out completely clean. After that, we're going to take them out of the oven, placing them onto our cooling rack to cool for 10 minutes. After those 10 minutes are up, we are then going to take our cupcakes out of their tray, placing them back onto the cooling rack to cool completely. And that is it. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out all the links in the description as I love them all and wouldn't put them there if I didn't, including the recipe for these lovely cupcakes and where you will also find the links for all of the flour and equipment you will need for this recipe. If you do make these at home, don't forget to tag me on Instagram and use the hashtag BakingWithVicky so that I can see all your lovely creations. 
Let me know in the comments below of anything else you'd like to see me make gluten, lactose and yeast free as I do them all. And finally, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you next time. Bye!